Né? Ok, are we ready? Can everybody hear me? All right, we're going to start. So welcome to my Zoom video. Uh, you're going to be learning today. I'll hold this up closer so you can see. Different techniques with alcohol ink to add um, brighter colors or a different dimension to your porcelain painting. I have notes here. I'm going to move my notes right here. Okay, so I want to start off by saying this. Alcohol ink is a non-fire product. So you will not put this in the kiln. This is what you will put in after all your porcelain painting is done. So just to let you know, I'll say it again, it is a non-fire product. There is a, a way to seal this. Uh, it's a spray, it's a varnish, and I'll show you that at the end because I'll talk about that uh, later on. I did want to say that this would fall under mixed media. IPAT has a category for competitions, mixed media. So mixed media is pulling two different art forms together to present a piece or three or four, how many different art techniques you, you would like to present. So just for the people out there that like, mm, I don't know about, about this. I'm just saying this is not, you would not put this in a competition as porcelain painting. You would stick it under mixed media because it would be a combination. Okay, so first thing we're gonna talk about is the products. So alcohol ink is just right there so you can see it. So alcohol ink, looks like this and is exactly what it's called, alcohol and ink together. It comes in really a variety of colors. Here, I'll put them down. These I got at uh, Michael Craft stores. These are the bigger ones. Normally you don't get them that big, but they also come in the smaller bottles. Now there's different brands. And different, we can tell I've used this one well because it's got purple all over it. Different brands will have different or brighter colors. That would be a personal choice to you. Um, the ones that are most common, you can get them at the craft store, but I've had better luck getting them. Here's a couple different brands here. Um, here we go closer. Uh, I've had better luck getting these on Amazon, a variety of color. Now you can get these at your, like I said, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. That's what we have here in California. There's Pinata. This one is a Tom Holtz, which is definitely the easier one to get. He has a huge line. Um, there is This is a, a group of alcohol inks. This is a different brand. If you can see up there, it's called Ranger. You can get them in sets. But I, by far, I think the best price is um, going to be online. So, um, okay. So here are. Now you can also use. Oh, I forgot to say. I got them set over here. This is a set of color that I purchased. It's a completely different brand, but this particular ink is for putting in resin. Now I've used them in resin, but they, they're just effective on um, porcelain. So you can also use, this might be news to um, some people. Here are Sharpies. Uh, Sharpies are alcohol ink, and I'll demonstrate how they are. That little felt thing inside the pen, let's get it out. The little felt, you know, you have this tip down here at the end, and then there's a big felt. Um, it's round, and, uh, and it's saturated with alcohol and ink, and it stays moist in here. So we're gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate that also. 
So when you're using cleanup or when you're using alcohol inks, whether it is to make the alcohol run as it is in here, you can see it's all running down. And that was done with alcohol. So can you use 70% alcohol? It probably will not grab onto the alcohol ink and run down. My advice and suggestion is to use the 91% alcohol. And then it's more um, alcohol than, than a water as opposed to the 70%. Okay. You can also, and I'll demonstrate this. This was a gift from Lois White. We're going to put some of the alcohol inks in here when I show you how to use them to paint. And the nice thing about this is, and I cleaned it up for this, you can, the alcohol ink will dry and you can use it and just re. Ah, y es que, por ejemplo, en este espacio del video hay una, una pregunta de multi, de, de coger la mejor contestación. Aquí hay un cierto y falso. Por acá más adelante hay I, un... I can't, I don't know if that's coming through. Somehow I'm getting somebody speaking in Spanish. So I stopped. Anyway, you can put the alcohol ink in here and it, it'll dry, but you can use either alcohol or a product that they sell. It's called blending solution. Now I, tr I tried this out uh, last night for the first time. This will thin out the alcohol ink. It doesn't keep it particularly wet longer, but it'll help the alcohol spread a little bit more, give you just a little bit more if you wanna thin out your solution instead of just thinning it out with alcohol, it will blend it better. So I'll be demonstrating that. I have here, these are little pipettes to um, grab the alcohol with, which I will demonstrate that also. Then I have some, brushes again these were a gift i wouldn't particularly tell you to use your good porcelain painting brushes but i would find some nice brushes that you can use to keep for alcohol ink i have used my porcelain brushes on water base and oil base but i usually have to clean them up really good in between because it kind of messes up the brushes so i, I suggest you get different less expensive brushes and save your your porcelain painting brushes uh, for porcelain because some of them are quite expensive i would find something more reasonable in price so let me move all these this out of the way now I'm going to show you one of the first things that I did because I had to have every color in the universe. How many China painters have to have every color that ever exists? I'm one of them, but excuse me, I got to stand up and get get the next item. All righty. So what I did was I took some of my porcelain and I put in there, they're beat up a little bit, but they'll they'll do for our demo because I haven't redone them. I've dropped these colors on the porcelain so I can see what the color looks like on porcelain. If you look here, this is poppy fields. For some reason, it didn't like this porcelain. I tried it several times. So it doesn't hurt to test, uh, have, a, have some porcelain so you can test the colors. So you know kind of, you just like any kind of painting, you know what colors to dig out. And here's this one. Okay, and what I did was I put it on and I tried to do it like on a palette where it goes from light to dark, but it didn't always work in every situation. But also after it dried, I wrote the names on them. So that's just a suggestion. It's nice to have these, this available to you so you can, Kind of see your colors. Okay. I'm looking at my notes here. Okay. okay, now we're going to talk about some different techniques before I start painting on the pieces, just so you can see. So here's a blank tile. And I'm going to take my little, little palette I showed you. So let's see. This is a nice color. So this is the... Uh, this is Tim Holtz, and the color is called Glacier. So now I have to warn you, I'm really bad at this, but 
because I forget to put gloves on, this this will get on your hands and stain your hands. And probably in the process of me showing you this, you're going to say, Kim, you should have put gloves on. So I would suggest that, especially if you have nails or you don't like getting things on your hand, it'll stain it for a day or two and then it comes off. So I'm going to put a little bit of that glacier blue right in there. So what I'm showing you is the techniques Uh, I'm sorry, look at my notes. Okay, so the first technique I'm gonna show you is not the one, not the painting. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes. So I'm just gonna grab some paper towels here. So normally how the running is, is done, and you'll see one of the techniques is to take your alcohol ink. Okay, I'm gonna tilt this up, the, the paper towels there because it, it, in case it runs, okay. And we're gonna put it on and we're just gonna let it run down. I'll grab another color there here so you can see. Now as alcohol ink, <laughs> alcohol ink, sorry, I need both hands. And you see it kind of, it started going out as I set it down. Alcohol ink is fluid and runs fast but eventually it runs down. It not only runs down, it runs out. And you put this down and as you see, it expands out as where this was just a drip at the top. As it goes down, it opens up wider. Now that's one technique just to put it on there and see what happens. What you can do, and why I talked about the pipettes, I'm gonna take the pipette, I'm gonna dip it in, get some alcohol in it. You've probably done this before, either with grumtine or maybe some dispersing agent. This is just alcohol and ink. So let me see what I'm doing here. Now, Realizing when you put the alcohol on, it's going to take off alcohol, right? It's gonna, it's going to remove some of the alcohol. So if you just start putting a lot on, like, oh, I'm just gonna run all this, you know, it's gonna pull off a lot of it. And it's an ever-changing thing. It takes a while for it to, oh, that came out kind of pretty. It took a while. It takes a while for it to finish what it's doing. It, it may not stay like this because the alcohol is still either running down or running out. And of course, you can tip it. Let me do it this way. You can see better. And you can have the lines run that way. Now, if I want something more controlled, I would just put one drip. You can see. Now, if I don't want something that wide, this is where you can use a paintbrush. Put that down. Give myself a little alcohol in here. So I can put on the brush. Here's the paintbrush. Now, there's a little bit of alcohol in here. It's, you can't see it, but it's, it's right in here. You can see the motion there. You can tell this is what I used last night. Okay, you can go directly into the alcohol, just tap it off a little bit, and you can do a run that way. There it is right there. Now, it's still going to spread out, just not as much as using a dropper. My suggestion, if you want more control, is to go into your alcohol brush it there, brush some of it off on the paper towel. Now, if you want a more controlled line, let's go over here to the blue. You might be able to see it better. So you can either go right in the alcohol, brush it on, you'll get a wider line, or you can go into the alcohol, brush off quite a bit from the brush, and then you would have smaller lines 
and more control that way. Now, let me wipe this off. I'll clean this up. And that, see, even that causes a really cool effect. But again, the alcohol is not going to stay those little drops. It's going to kind of all run together. Um, no, I'll show that on the, okay, so let's clean that up. I didn't clean that. Makes kind of a pretty background, too. Okay, now we're back to almost white tile. Now, we can go in here and do the same thing. We can just go directly into our alcohol ink. Let's wipe some off. And we can just paint with it on the porcelain. But as you see, it's going to spread out. It doesn't run down, but let me go in again. Let me just, I'm just going to go into the alcohol ink and I'm just going to barely tap any off. And that will cause, of course, I smush the brush down. Maybe I won't smush the brush down. Let's, so that's just going directly in. This would really be, actually, you see this right here? I'm kind of excited about this one. Um, I flattened this brush, and then as I pulled, of course, I pulled up. That looks kind of cool if you were doing like an ocean scene and wanted to add a little bit more. Those look like underwater little reeds. Okay, so that's the alcohol ink just directly in the alcohol. I'm going to stop and grab, pick up another Remember I talked about this blending solution? Okay, so I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna drop a little bit. Uh, I put about three drops. So it was almost equal parts. I'm gonna clean off that brush. Now you can see, I've added the, the, the uh, blending solution. I'm gonna mix it up, tap it off, and do the same thing side by side so you can see what it looks like with the blending solution, what it does. It makes the color lighter. Okay, let's try that again. But this time I'm going into the blending solution. I'm gonna pull a little bit off on my paper towel. So it lightens the color. Okay, so those, that's two techniques where you just put the alcohol and run it. And then this is with the brush. Now I promised you I would show you the markers. Isn't that cool? That's from spraying alcohol. I'm gonna show you uh, later when I do the piece, how to just flick alcohol with your fingers and the different techniques in doing that. So I'm gonna grab these Sharpie markers. Let's just go ahead. Oh, let's, uh, let's pick one, two. Uh, let's go with these three colors. So any Sharpie marker, marker will do. It doesn't necessarily have to be a paintbrush. That just means the tip's a little bit um, a little bit softer and bendable. Let's see, there it is on my fingers. Okay, so we have a green, we have a blue, and we have kind of a magenta pink. So let's do a little color there. Do a little color there. Let's take the blue. These pins are great when you're doing small pieces because you don't have to get in there with a brush. It works uh, pretty good on bisque too. I'm gonna put some green in there. Okay, so now we have three colors. Hopefully they won't make an ugly color. Let's go back to 
our dropper and there we go. So you get a kind of a water, watercolor technique on your porcelain. And you can see it does run. This is really kind of fun to do on ornaments. Okay. Again, you could take your paintbrush. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear, that's the vacuum running. Okay, we can take our paint paintbrush. Can go in the alcohol. Oh, that's the dirty one. I did put some clean in here. I'm gonna tap it off. And again, You can add it's kind of running together. So maybe I would suggest letting this dry a little bit and then try the paintbrush technique. But you could get really you could do really pretty things on some little small uh, ornaments or necklace pieces. Yeah, that's staying a little better. Okay. Let me clean up a little bit here. Get some things out of camera. Look at my notes. Okay, let me show you one more thing and then I'll start painting so you can see uh, some of the pieces. I'll talk about those. So let's take, uh, I think you'll see green better on camera. Let's just take some green. Okay. So I can take alcohol. I'm going to I'm going to use the pipette on my hands. I'm going to show you two different ways. Uh-oh. Am I back on? Yes, sorry. So I'm going to put the alcohol on my fingers and I'm going to splatter. Now that gives you some pretty big cells. Now, if you want to see, and it continues to grow and grow out. So it's not completely done till it's done. Sometimes you may lose a good image. So you, what you can do is put, oh, sorry, alcohol on your fingers. Do the first splatter on the paper towel. Flick off your hand a little bit and then come up. And then you'll have smaller. Okay. And I've got, I haven't put any more alcohol in my hands. So you have more control. If you just go directly from your hand, from the alcohol in your hands onto the piece, it's going to widen up like this. If you put it on your hands and flick flick off a couple and then come over here, you'll get a you'll get a smaller effect. All right, let us do. Let me get all this out of the way. And let's work on the kitty. Put some more paper towels down. And I I'm trying to think if there's something I could just keep it lifted up, but I think I have to move it so much. So this cat, let me talk about him. This was fired. This is all fired. It's all porcelain painting. So 
what I did on the first fire is I looked for all the shadows and kind of gave him some shape like you would on a first fire. You, you keep your highest value of light and you make sure you can identify everything on the second fire. So that's what I kind of did. Then on the second fire, I put black on those areas and I did a little, uh, I may have sprayed alcohol and then I did some flicking. This one I think particular I did with some oil. Uh, I think I used uh, Daphne Stevens Amarillo oil because I didn't want such a big run. So uh, you could you could experiment with with different oils, however you have to go and clean up because you don't want it, it running. So the alcohol is probably a better solution because you put on the your black paint. However, the paint was thinner. And I didn't worry so much. I didn't make it thin that it would run, but I made it thin so that when I put the alcohol on, it will open up. Um, and if you have oil-based paint, and you put alcohol over it or, or, or do this technique, that alcohol will help dry, dry up some of the paint in the area so it won't run in the kiln. However, experimenting is all I can tell you to do because a lot of students come up and say, oh, I don't, how does this work? I said, let's experiment because I really don't know because it varies from product to product. So this is one, this is probably two fires because you can see I came in here with some colors to identify a few things and then I made. So I, I painted black, splattered, and then after it was all cleaned up, I came in with oil-based paint and did a little because if you, um, you know that technique where you do oil base and then water base on top and you can do it all in one fire. So now here's our kitty. So let us work on the background. So we're going to do the technique I showed you first. Okay. I'm going to put it down a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to let the alcohol run there. And I'm going to let the alcohol run there. Then I'm going to pick up a second color. I've got to open it up. I'm just going to use two colors on this one. Then I'm going to pick up my second color and let it kind of run. I'm going to put some purple here and here. Let's pick up our glacier blue. That was twilight purple, by the way. Let's use a little bit more twilight purple. And let's put some twilight purple here, here, and blue here. You see, I was pretty, pretty messy with it. It's the same thing like with lusters. It, you know, if you're using two luster colors that like each other there in the C and C, it will get your back. So you have to remember to clean everything. So I'll, I'll clean him up in a minute, but I'm going to use uh, the different techniques I showed you. So here's just a pipette with alcohol in it. Let's just stick to the sides here. Maybe a little bit here. Now, while that runs, I'm going to tilt it while everything is still fluid. Seeing it's all collecting down here, so I'll let some of that run off the piece. I can flip this over. Okay, now let's do a little bit of where I put the alcohol on my fingers, right? And I'll flick off a couple and then I'll flick right there. And then See, I think that was too much alcohol. But it looks kind of cool. Let's do a lesser flick over here with less alcohol. That will probably hold better. 
Now I'm going to clean it up for you real quick so you can see, you know, the outcome we're going for here. I did spit on my paper towel. You can put a little bit of alcohol on your paper towel. I'll do the back later. So I'm just going to come in here. Clean him up a little bit. Let's see, it's not coming off here because it dried. So if it's drying, I'll just put a little alcohol on my paper towel. Then I can go back and clean it up some more. But that's up to you how much you want to take off, whatever effect you want. You can also get out a Q-tip. Now these Q-tips are, uh, I think I've gotten them on Amazon and eBay, but I look for double-tipped or pointed Q-tips for cleaning a gun. That's how I get these. You can use a little bit of spit or alcohol. And of course, get in there and get some finer details. You can even let's put a little alcohol on this little Q-tip here. So I did spray it with alcohol. Say so I want to come in here and make some of my holes. bigger. I didn't even show you that technique in the beginning. I just realized this one. So I do have just a little bit of alcohol in there. There you go. You can open up the more cells. Okay. There he is, the kitty. Um, I'm going to tell you now because I know the end will come. And if I don't have it on my notes, I'll probably forget to tell you. So let's talk about how you um, seal this off. So you don't, if you're just going to display this piece, you know, you could leave it. But if you're afraid it's going to get touched a lot or you would really you feel more confident, this is what we've used to seal it. Okay. This is a product. It's called Kmar Varnish. It's a Krylon product. And it does say non-yellowing product for oil, acrylic, and watercolor. So this is water-based. Um, keep fresh from the palette look. Acid-free allows easy rework. This, now you're going to, well, can, can I use another varnish or clear varnish? Kmar varnish, when you spray it, will not cause the colors to run again. So you'd have to, if you want to try another varnish, you'd have to experiment. But this doesn't cause more running. It will seal it. So you have to go outside and use this product and you would spray this three separate times, but it dries very quickly. So here's the product and that's how I would seal it. Um, the ceiling's up to you. You know, I, I recommend it because if somebody picks it up and touches it and their hands wet, you'd have to redo it and they'd have alcohol ink all over their hands. Okay, so I have, that is the cat. Let's stick him up here. Okay. Here is the parrots. Mr. Mr. Parrot, Mrs. Parrot, or Mr. and Mrs., Mrs. and Mrs., or two friends. But we have two parrots. So I have, uh, some of you know Kathy Cochran Gilbert. She lives in this area. She painted these two pieces. As she asked me one day online what I was, she, I was texting her and she goes, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm working on these parrots for this demo for iPad. So she got excited and she wanted to try it. So there's that one. And there's that one. She went back with a little fine line 
and put in some of this. Uh, I, I can't remember what it looks like before, but there you go. Those are those. Okay. Sorry if I say okay a lot. I just do. Let's pick out some colors and we're going to paint these birds. Let's take our little palette here. So we already have the glacier blue. I think I'll use blue. Let's use a little bit of that twilight purple. Uh, let's go with some orange. Orange. Let's go with some pink. This is bubblegum pink. The orange was ember. And these are all uh, Tom Holtz products, I believe. Glacier blue. The green is, this, we're going to put this in here. This is Laguna blue. So it's kind of a blue green. And the purple's twilight purple. And then I have some yellow here. This one's called dandelion. So we'll just go with those colors. And then what I'm going to do, so I have it, I'm going to stick some alcohol in here so I can clean the brushes in between. So I have that. Okay. So now, oh, there went some lid. Okay. Okay, again, okay, again. I'm sorry, I just, the way my mind works. So let's start with, I'll start, this is a little bit wider brush. And let's go ahead and start with, oh, let's start with the bubblegum pink. Ugh, that was a mistake. The brush wasn't clean enough. Okay, now we can go into the bubblegum pink. Okay, so I'm here with the bubblegum pink. See, I got blue in it, so I'm like, ah. Okay. Let's start with the pink. Sorry, I saw alcohol there. Okay. I guess I should say before we get too involved, this is one fire. I did all the shadows I thought I could get in there. I didn't have the original picture to show you. So I'm gonna put, so anyway, so I, I, I painted the black, I painted the orange and the feet, yellow, there's a little bit of blue and I fired this. Now we're doing the, this part. So I'm gonna put a little bit of pink right there. Well, let's give him a little pink right there. Okay. I'm going to wipe it off. I'm going to clean the pink off the brush. And let's go into the orange, the ember. Okay. I'm going to tap that brush a little on the paper towel and let's get some orange Then instead of, I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to just go directly into a little bit of that yellow. You can see the colors are starting to run together. Let's add some yellow over here. And let's just finish him off with.
yellow down here. Then I'm going to go back into that amber orange. Sorry, I need to hold it closer. Okay, he looks pretty cool at this point, but let's put this down. Oh, here, let me hold it up. Let's clean this brush off. This is all, like I said, alcohol in here. Let's get some alcohol. Then I'm gonna wipe it off pretty good on the paper towel. Let's see if I can add. A little bit more dimension to him. Okay, right here, I think. Since I feel like there's too much of a line there. And this is alcohol in the brush right now. And I left part of his face a little too pale there, so. There he is. So let's paint the other one very quickly. Okay, we're still good on time. Let's go in with some green and blue. So I'm gonna go into this Laguna blue for him. Let's start down here. Okay, I'm gonna go into the darker blue, which was the glacier. Yeah, I brushed across my hand. You get it off with alcohol quickly. It may not have too big a stain for too long. So I didn't wear gloves on purpose so you could see how not to, to do it. Let's put some in between. Okay, now I'm going back into that green. I didn't really clean the brush off the Laguna. I do want to add some put some blue on his head. Let's add a few little elements. He's looking really cool, this guy. And I'm going to clean off the brush and I really did want to get some a little bit of yellow in him to pull some of the yellow from here over to here. So I'm going into the yellow. Let's put some yellow on his face. Do some yellow on top of that. And let's Okay, now let's do our alcohol. I'll just do it with the paintbrush here and we get all that color off the brush. Okay, now I got a brush with just alcohol. Not too much. They look pretty cool the way they are. So now for the background, and you could also, I would have painted it in. I wouldn't do it with alcohol ink. I didn't think about it. You could do a branch to connect everything, but I wouldn't do it with alcohol ink. I just, you could, because I'm going to do some other techniques on here. So I'm going to clean up where I kind of overpainted just a little bit, like right here. Now we can, 
we're going to try a different technique I didn't show you in the beginning. We're going to do a little bit of background. I'm going to pick some of the, I think I'm going to go with the bubble gum. Okay, let me come over here to the camera. I'm going to go with the bubble gum, but I'm just going to tap it off. Then I'm going to see if I tap my brush. I'm going to clean that off. Maybe I'll just pull I, I pink from here. I think I'll pull, I'll pull the green, the Laguna. Same thing. There you go. Again, you, you would take this and it, it kind of splashed right there. So I would clean that up, but I think I'll just move it a little bit there. You would take this outside after this is completely dry and then you would spray it three three times so there's that there's a combination of porcelain painting and uh alcohol paint. so real quick i have this from a previous demonstration i just want to show you this blue is already it's a beautiful turquoise but i'm going to go into that glacier color and Maybe add, and then I'm gonna go into that Laguna, the green, the blue green. And you could brighten it up that way. Or you could do, you know, you could do the background or Let's go into that twilight purple a little bit. Very bright, really pretty purple. Maybe come in here and brighten up my I wouldn't do the whole thing because you don't want to cover up your painting too much. But give that just a different a little bit different uh hue okay that is all i have on my notes i'm ready for questions or we can end the video right there anyone would like to ask questions unmute yourself and ask your question but make sure you mute it back Kim, we want to thank you very much for giving us this great presentation. We've all been looking forward to it. And uh, it's, a, it's a great way to add a beautiful multimedia technique onto our already painted porcelain. Um, thank you for giving your I'll time. Call that person know. back. Thank you for giving your time and talents to iPad. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day.